Mr. O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson passed away last night at the age of 76 from cancer, uh, something I don't think a lot of people knew that he had. Um, and that led to a conversation, which we all know Twitter is not a not a place for nuance, like at all. Yeah, the, 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 there's uh there's heaven and there's hell on Twitter. There's no there's no in between. And so I wanted to talk about OJ Simpson's complicated legacy today to start off the show because I do believe that this is a situation where both pe both people on whatever side of the fence you're on with OJ have strong opinions and, and rightfully so. I'm not here to uh say or you know say which way you should lean. I'm just thinking it's a complicated situation because you gotta understand where. You know, a lot of us, I, I mean, everybody on this show is just at least in their 30s. And I'm, I'm going to go to Bang next because Bang has a more of a, he's the elder statesman on, on, on the show. And I'm not I'm not calling you old. I'm just saying you're the elder statesman on, nigga, on the show. Nigga, when you say elder. <laughs> damn, nigga. What's the better way you want me to say it? Nigga, he's OG a, or something. He's an OG, okay. <laughs> Uh, nigga, seasoned veteran, motherfucker. See, the seasoned veteran. Of seasoned the veteran, fam. He's give me that. Veteran. We're, we're, we're J.R. Smith and Melo. He was Rasheed Wallace. Yeah, oh, give me that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, okay. The savvy so, veteran and shit. The, you know <laughs> the savvy veteran. That's, that's what we're going to go with. The savvy veteran. My bad. Not seasoned. The savvy veteran. But O.J. Simpson, man, for me, I'm 35 years old. I'll be 36 this year. And... That was the first life memory that I like first life uh, events that I can remember. I don't, of course, I don't remember the exact details of it because I was five, six years old. But what I do remember was it was in the summer, uh, 1994. And I my cousin would always come in town and stay with us when he was, you know, off school because he went to Northern. And I remember he always had the room that had the only had the air conditioning in the house. And so I would always be in there. We watching basketball or whatever. And all I know is everybody ran to my parents' room. They're like, oh, this is a chase going on. Now, I didn't know this was OJ Simpson. I knew nothing about the chase. I just knew I saw a, a white car speeding down the expressway in the middle of a basketball game. Now, that you go coming off that and you do more research, obviously, when you get old, when I got older and I saw just how great of a football player he was at USC when he was at when he was in Buffalo playing with the Bills and then of course his good a uh, career where he went into acting went into broadcasting was very good at that and that's why even when he joined Cameron and Macy's it is what it is podcast this year a lot of people were like that doesn't make any sense I'm like well OJ before he the, the situation obviously he was a good sports commentator so from a he had a job fam that was he had a his job, job. Black. exactly so like he's he was able to you know he still has good takes on that now my thing is this if you're somebody i'm not with the revisionist history just because somebody died I'm, I'm i'm not with that but i do feel like in this particular situation it's like he would now we, we're not going to debate about whether you think he's guilty or not that's a whole nother conversation uh 30 year old conversation at this point i personally don't think he did it but that's just my opinion from all the Stuff that I've seen and, and read and, and that's wild amazing. as fuck. Amazing. I, I don't think he did it. I think he knows who did it. I don't think he himself did it. It'd have been he he'd have been the most strategic killer of all time, I believe, if he actually did it. But uh, of course, we know you got the racism effect uh, effect into it as well. So I understand why some people uh want to crush him and why some people don't want to crush him. But I feel like with this situation, it's like it's the only situation I feel like where there's been a situation where he was called guilty and nobody cares. It's like murderer. And so I feel like that's what needs to be a little bit of nuance in that in that kind of conversation where I think that whatever side you're on, I feel like that you have the right to be on that side. And I don't think you should be condemned for whatever side that you're on because I feel like it's a multi-faceted situation. But I'm going to go to Bang first, our uh, seasoned vet, to give us more of a of savvy, a, of a fam, I'm savvy, savvy vet. Fam. Savvy vet. More you know of a, uh, you know, a more uh, of approach to somebody who's more around the floor than we were. Man, when that happened, that was, first of all, when the verdict happened, they wheeled the TVs inside of the classroom and they showed the verdict. And that was the first time I really realized the difference between white people and black people. Because... At the school I went to, I, every school I went to was in the hood, and we had majority black teachers. I did not grow up in one of those schools that it was like a whole bunch of white teachers. So the black teachers was in class, like, giving us the the, the Arsenio Hall root, 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 root. 
white teachers was like, man, what the fuck? What the fuck did I just see? Also, I believe that's the first time that I really realized that it was guilty until proven innocent. Now, I was too young to even give a damn about if he did it or not. But then when I look at everything, it's like, yo, if he ain't do it, he know who did it. He he has an idea or something. He he's not, this is not benign, fam. This is he know who did it. That being said, the man became a pariah. But before that, when we used to watch NBC Sports, dude was the sideline reporter and a very good sideline reporter. Him and Amar Rashad, when it comes to sideline reporting, was like neck and neck when it came to basketball and sports. OJ Simpson was doing his thing. Then you got the naked gun. If you go farther than that, I think it was the Towering Inferno he was in that my father had me watching some shit. The shit that The Rock did, uh, redid or whatever. He was in Roots. I, OJ Simpson still for the black community was not looked at favorably after he divorced his black wife and went to Nicole Brown Simpson. The Hertz commercial and all of that, all of that was cool, but he ain't black. He OJ. That's really what it was for a lot of people because... Even still, my father would be like, man, it's Uncle Tom ass up out of here. But the minute he got off, it seemed like it changed. He became an icon for black people for getting off, but then a pariah to white people and black people and others who thought he did it. So the comp complicated legacy is no, no way to even explain what O.J. Simpson is. It's just simple. You forget about everything that happened. The minute he ended up in that Chicago hotel and they was like, yo, what blood is this? Simply put, nobody talks about the fact that this dude was the first, I believe he was the first running back to rush for 2,000 yards and he did it twice. Nobody talks about how he basically had the Buffalo Bills on his back. Nobody talks about, you can say at one point in time, O.J. Simpson could have been the greatest football player of all time. And if he had actually won a title, he probably would be considered one of the greatest football players of all time. I think they had him 40th in the, the ranking that they did on NFL Network. If he won a title, O.J. Simpson would be top five, top 10 at the very least. But you forget about all of that. You don't even care about all of that. You only care about the trial. And when you go to the fact that he actually went to jail, you now you can't tell me this. OJ Simpson didn't go to jail for robbing his like robbery. Oh no, that was his own shit back. That was, that was revenge, back. retaliation, yeah. and get back right there. We got him. And he set up in jail for that. But it's just you forget about everything that that man did in his life before that day. And even when you look at, I can't remember what day it was. Um, I know they got a 30 for 34. I think it's like June 17th or some shit like that. Is the, this, it's June this. 17th. There we go. See, look at me on it. But I remember watching the NBA Finals that day, Houston versus New York. And then they, they jumped in with the coverage. So it was Hakeem Olajuwon and Patrick Ewan. But then in the right corner, it was the chase going on. And I remember my father like, man, get that shit up off my goddamn TV. I'm trying to see Patrick <laughs> Ewan in them. So it's just a legacy that was just damaged beyond repair because one incident changed the life of OJ, his family, Nicole Brown Simpson, Ron Goldman, and everybody that was around that, the L.A. police. Mark Furman and all of that shit. Like, you, if you remember Judge Ito, like you... And everything that we know about TV changed at that moment. Niggas was mad that all my children was not coming on because niggas was trying to watch the goddamn O.J. Simpson trial. Time. Like, fuck, fuck O.J. Where's Erica Kane at, fam? <laughs> like, where's Adam Chandler at, fam? But it's just... A legacy that, when you think about it, is far reaching into even till today because there's no court TV. There's no break ins in TV like this is, like right now. There's not a lot of stuff if it's not the OJ trial. Dante, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you, man. What's your take on the complications with OJ's legacy and how, you know, people have been responding the last 24 hours? 
Uh, I think more than anything, one thing this has showed us, and yesterday I actually went and ran back the uh, OJ Made in America documentary, which is, in my opinion, that's like probably one of the best sports documentaries ever. Yeah, definitely. Easily, probably. easily. And so um, it just shows how, you know, when people become celebrities and we place them in this holier than thou spot in our society, like shit can go left. Like, and so OJ was an example of that. And like you said, um, everything that happened really outweighs everything he's done. And I think it's one of those situations where even though that's true, this isn't really a time for people to be taking victory laps and stuff. Because my thing was this, when everybody jumped out the window with, the, oh, he's a murderer, blah, 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 blah. Like, y'all haven't thought about the Brown family or the Goldman family in years. And the only time y'all talk about them is when people bring up OJ. So it's like, let it rest. It's over. And I think the, the statement that his kids released, the end of it was holding the, the, the whole statement together. And it was like, and grace. It was like, just give us grace. We know what yeah. this situation is. At the same time, there's still a pops. Um, I think, you know, people were mad at the Heisman Association for, you know, saying they condolences. But like I said, that part of his life still happened. So it shouldn't, you shouldn't be upset if somebody acknowledged it. Now, of course you got people that were doing goofy shit, but that's just ending that. We, we take that with everything big that happens, but this was without a doubt, one of those culture moving moments. And um, with everything we've seen from it, from the TMZ, like you said, to the court TV, um, it, it has a place in history that you have to acknowledge it, whether you want to or not. So I think, like you said, it's very complicated, but it's definitely not a time for people to take victory laps and shit. Cause I mean, that's just, that's just hella disingenuous. You don't really, really mean what you're saying. Mike, man, I'm, I'm, I'm throw it to you, man. What's your take on, you know, everything involving OJ and before you talk, I knew you, oh, that's actually, I got you on mute. That's me. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I agree with uh, what Bang and Dante said about the day. You know, how people are, you know, our social media is they going to get their jokes in. Like it was really astonishing to see how people, was laughing at his death and I'm like man the world is so fucking cruel you know what I'm saying like you know memes and stuff like that I'm like man it's crazy and then, like Bang said like honestly it just takes away from a lot of shit that he did especially on the football field like but you know what I'm saying at that point besides like Jim Brown or even Jim Brown he was looked at as the best one yep. of the best ever. Like you said, he ran for 2,000 yards and they played, what, 14 games back then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, they trying to get the NFL players to play 18 games. He did 2,000 He did two thousand yards and, and 14 I games. I think you they know? said his game average was 143 yards per game, fam. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's nasty. That's nuts. That's nuts. You got to remember, he was a dog in, in, in college as well. So, you know, uh, we all have our opinion and there's always been barbershop talk and things like that, if OJ did it or not or whatnot, and, you know, people make joke of it. But at the end of the end of the day, you know, someone, you know, someone died in the situation, you know, even when in this case and, you know, in this family's case. So it's kind of tough to talk about that. It's kind of it's, – it's, it's always hard bringing up OJ because that's always going to be the elephant in the room. Like, yeah. you rarely see the NFL talk about OJ. You know what I'm saying? Because if you bring up, like, 2,000-yard Russia, you got to say OJ Simpson. It's kind of like, oh, you say his name, it just brings up all this other shit that goes along with it. So it's kind of always been tough. But, um, you know, for his family, you know what I'm saying, like, condolences to them and, and things like that. Like, like you said, only, only God knows if he did it or not and things like that. But, you know, as a football player and everything else he did, it seemed like – when it was time to do his job, he did his job. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it, it's like it's going to be hard because people are going to they're going to talk their shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just give them more ammo now that he's passed. You know, like like um, Bang was saying, like especially with you know white people who felt like you know he got fucked over, so they're like, yo, yeah, he gets reserved. But eventually, he was going to pass away anyway. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't even know he had cancer. He definitely kept it away. Uh, for a very long time, and I, I know he's um, been on the Cam and um, Mace podcast for a while, and he actually did some good work on that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's kind of tough. So that's that's my breakaway from it though. But I'll, I'll definitely a great ass running back, and like Bang said, if he would have won a ring, he definitely would have been up there. But I think even still, <laughs> the amount of yards he was, you know, what I'm saying he was getting, and the amount of games that they were playing to achieve that. It's definitely impressive. And, and you know, when you said, like, when people bring him up, like, I think they did, like, the when they did doing the uh, NFL's 100th season, they did the top 100 players. 
and they got to like number 43. And Bill Belichick, the only one at the table, like talk about it in football. He say, yeah, from a football perspective, like, I've never seen Bill Belichick talk that much. He's like, he was incredible. So it's like, yeah, and I understand it's going to always be that. I just feel like there's a little bit of room for nuance. But uh, Tosa, man, take us home on this, man. What, what's your thoughts on this? And then we'll move on to the next topic. I mean, obviously, when it happened, um, I was four. Yeah, I was in London. So that shit didn't affect me until I moved to America. I didn't know anything about football at all. So yeah. as I got older, living in America, like, you know, I moved here when I was 11. I was like, oh, shit, like, he was a really good four. Because only thing I knew about OJ was that, like, they say he killed somebody, right? As a kid that came to America, that's the only thing I knew. It was just like, oh, shit, yeah. this guy. And then, like, as I started watching more football, I was like, oh, this nigga was nice. Like, it was nice. this nigga was insane. And I was just like, as I've gotten older, you know, I've learned to, like, I think one of the things is sometimes you just got to shut the fuck up because there's some things you just need, you just don't need to talk about. So it's just like, I think the biggest thing that like I, I was seeing yesterday, especially on Twitter, like David Dennis said at the best was like, don't get your ass fired from your job. I think a lot of people <laughs> can jokes and it's just like, yo, it's still a sensitive topic for some people, man. Like you got to be careful and know the circles, like get a group chat. If you want to talk shit, get a group chat. But yep. I think the, the wild thing about OJ is like, he was an amazing football player. Probably, you know, like, Bang said, one of the greatest running backs ever, you know, top five, top 10 running back, wherever you see it. Um, that's the one thing about him. But the other thing is like, I think that case really changed the way we see society, right? Like, I yeah, think that yeah. that really birthed the idiot who just generally gets popular for a situation. I feel like without that, without that case, without that, everything that happened, we wouldn't have like the um, things that we have today. We wouldn't have like the tv shows we have today like a lot of it just came from that trial like we just generally just got so many things that like shit it birthed the kardashians we didn't know nothing about them so his daddy was on that prosecution yeah thing. i mean <laughs> they were always i mean the thing is they were rich they've always been yeah. rich they, yeah. rich as hell but like their father became a thing johnny Co like it's funny because that case i actually want to become a lawyer because of johnny cochran i only knew johnny cochran because of that case i i really went to uh, my, my freshman year college i tried to take a class like trying to get introduction to law school and i was like I got to do this? Like, hell no, I'm not doing that. But Johnny Cochran's literally was one of my heroes growing up because, you know, that's of this trial. Like, you knew Johnny Cochran and everybody. So it's insane, man. Like, it's like, it bursts so much shit that, like, we don't necessarily need, but that trial did that. So, yeah, it's a real weird situation with OJ because it's like, that's one of the greatest running backs ever, but also at the same time, that happened as well. So yeah, condolences to his family, condolences to the Brown and the Goldmans as well because yeah, what can you say? And paper on these player haters old news money on the other line so i'm not gonna hold you money on the other line so i'm not gonna